Well, good morning. I welcome you all that have joined us this morning. I can't sure see you. It feels a little empty up here, but I trust that you have all gathered in your living room and you are as a family and you're going to worship God. Nothing can stop us from serving God. Nothing can stop us from worshiping Him, no matter what happens. And so we are so glad that God has blessed us with as a church that when things like this happen, this is very unknown. This is all different and new for all of us throughout the world. But we're so glad that we can do this online, we can do this live, and we didn't even have to prepare much for it during this week. So we are so glad. I'm so glad you are joining us this morning. I also want to encourage you to like this message and share it so more people can get the Word of God. And we trust and believe fully that you will be blessed, you will be encouraged, that you will be challenged, and that you will just grow in Christ. And there's somebody that listens that isn't saved, that they will just feel the Holy Spirit calling them to the Lord and get saved and become a child of God. Well, this is a virus that is, uh, has been spreading throughout our country, and they are just trying to prevent that from spreading. And that's why they ask us that we would uh, help them to do that. And that is what we as a church want to do. Uh, we really pray and trust that this will be very short. It will be just temporary, and then this will move out, and we will be back uh, to normal in our lives. So we as a, as a church, we will give you updates as we will have, have updates that will uh, be part of what we do. Uh, our elders uh, agreed on making decisions a week at a time. So everything this coming week that was scheduled is canceled. By Wednesday or Thursday morning, we'll give you an update and we will go a week at a time. Uh, just so we can uh, obey the law, but also that you can be informed. Uh, and we trust that shortly we can gather again in this building and then worship the Lord in that way. You know, and one thing I mentioned in a little video this week is once it actually is our life or our family, that's when we react differently uh, c compared to when we are just told to respond to this. And so our prayer would be that we would never want to do something that would cause a spreading of a disease where people would be very ill or even would have deaths in a family. I uh, called a good friend of mine or contacted him through WhatsApp this week. We talked about certain things, and this guy's name is Abe Harder. He is a pastor in Bolivia. I am already scheduled to go there and do deeper life services and revival services. I have never met the person uh, in person, but I've been in contact with him through WhatsApp in the last few months, so he is a great man of God. I have really already enjoyed visiting with him and build a relationship with him. But one thing he told me is that not this last week, but the week before on Wednesday, they had a funeral in their church, and there was one family from Canada that had been there because they were family, on Thursday, they had still sat with them around the table and ate and did their goodbyes, whatever they do in Bolivia, hugging, kissing. I don't know if they do kissing, but hugging and handshaking. And then they went to the airport and they flew back to Canada. When they got home, they felt sick. They checked it out and they were positive for coronavirus. So as a pastor, he said, we don't even know for sure if we have it now too or not or where, they, where this has come from. And so their churches in Bolivia are also all online this morning for the ones that uh, we are connected with and we know. So we, we just want to be responsible and do the right things. Uh, we have very strict orders in our county regarding gatherings. And so we trust and pray that it will go away soon. And so I want to invite you, faith family, pray. Or if you want to pray and fast that this will uh, leave our communities and our country so that life can get back to normal. Let's do that. We believe in God. He is our creator. He hears us. He answers us. And that is our faith in him. So let us do that. Also, uh, we are the church. Whether we gather in this building or where we are, whether we are home in our living rooms, wherever we're at, we together are the church. 
if we are spread out or together. So our faith, our walk with Christ doesn't change. And we know at the end, God always wins. So we're going to do that. We're going to not let us stop from serving Him. We may have different opinions and ideas about this. We will act differently. No matter what, we're going to be faithful and we're going to be the light for Christ in our homes, in our community, in our business, in church, wherever we're at, we're going to shine for Christ. Now, the order of this morning service is going to be a little bit different. After I, I'm done sharing with you, then we are, I'm going to do a prayer. And after the prayer, we're going to have our worship team that led us last Sunday in singing. We're going to have that online live. We had saved that in our computer. And they're going to lead us in worship singing this morning. And then after that, we're going to have a message, and I'm looking much forward to that. Uh, our uh, brother, uh, Jake Geisberg, he is our new elder. He is also has gifts of the Holy Spirit, and some of those gifts are teaching and preaching. And not only does he have the gift, but he also enjoys using the gifts for the glory of God. And he's going to share with us a message about growing our faith and I am so looking forward to that, and I know you will be blessed. When the Holy Spirit is at work and the Word of God is being preached, God is at work, and He does great and mighty things. Also, um, I'm not going to go over the bulletin. You all got them in the WhatsApp, so you can go there, you can read it, and if we have to uh, stay in this way for, uh, for whatever period of time we have to do it, some of the things that are coming up, if they come into that time, then they will be canceled and then postponed later on when things go back to more normal. And also, um, as I mentioned uh, in our text yesterday, finances are always part of a church service. And uh, they often even say, if you want to know if people truly trust God and have faith in Him, then they will be faithful with tithing. That's, if they're not faithful with tithing, they're probably not trusting God in other places either. So we're going to be faithful with that as well so that all the ministries of the Lord through this local body can continue and can go forth. And so therefore, there is the button that I sent you on WhatsApp. You can click on it and give your offering through that. You can send your check through the, to the church. The address is on the uh, uh, bottom of the bulletin. Also, um, you can go to our church website, lgcsublette.com, and there is a button, give. It's the same as the, uh, the button that I sent you on WhatsApp, and we can do it in that form as well. In our singing, this was from last Sunday, by the fourth song, there is actually an offertory prayer that I prayed last Sunday. We're just going to let it play like that as well, and uh, we will serve Christ in that way. So just so you know, after the singing, then there will be the message, and then that will conclude our service. So join me in an open prayer. Father God, we are so thankful that you love us. We are so thankful that you already knew about all this. And Lord, we want to be obedient to you because we trust you, we rely on you. We are so thankful, God, that you have not given us a spirit of fear. You have given us a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind. And so we are so thankful for that, God. So this morning, I just pray that you will bless every listener. I pray that you will encourage them, that they will just grow in their faith. And so I just pray this morning that your Holy Spirit will be at work in every home, and every living room where the message is being heard through online services. And Father God, we pray that you would just make this virus blow away very soon and quickly. That's our desire. But we don't know what you have in store throughout this. But we do know that through this you will do great things. We do know that evil will be hurt, will be damaged. We do know that people will turn to you because they will know that only you are the ultimate source that can heal, that can restore, that can help. And so today just pray that this service will honor you and praise you. 
I pray as we will worship through singing that our hearts and our souls will be in tune and worship you. I pray as we already have prayed before as a group here that you will just bless Jake and empower him through your Holy Spirit to preach the word that you already placed on his heart to share with us this morning. Now, guide us, lead us, give us wisdom to make the right decisions that will honor you, that will also enable us to be better witnesses, to shine more for you, Christ, and to follow you. Thank you for what you will do during this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. I've tested and tasted your grace. I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold.
nailed him. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hands that healed nations stretched out on a tree.
forward. Join me in a prayer. Father God, we are so thankful that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, and that we can now rise in you, Christ. We're so thankful what you've done on the cross for us, that we have been forgiven of our sins. You paid it on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Lord God, we are so thankful that you give us life. You give us health. You give us jobs. You give us income. You give us money can earn we can go and we can provide for our families we can provide for whatever is around us we can also give so that your ministry can continue we are so thankful for that god and father if you want to be obedient to you as your children and you call us to give our tithe to give our 10 percent to the church and here we want to just collect the offering that you have blessed us with throughout this week you want to give our tithe back to you and Lord God, I just pray that you will give us willing hearts, obedient hearts to give what belongs to you. And Lord, I pray that what is going to be given, that you will make it efficient, that it will go a long ways, and that the needs of this local church will be met and be on reaching out for more people to point it to you, Christ. And we thank you what you will do, what you're already doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome to see. I guess you're not here today, but you're at home. I we checked the live stream. It looks like most of you are watching, so that was encouraging to see that you guys are at home worshiping, even though this is a little different than what we're used to. Um, turns out I'm more camera shy than I am people shy, so it's a little different for me, but I'll do my best anyway. Um, given the light of everything that's going on. Um, you know, the enemy uses many channels to um, give us fear and to run us down, but we want to use these things, these tools that we have, rather to uh, spread the gospel, right? 
So we're going to do this this way today. Um, when we kind of look around at what's going on, um, you kind of see a lot of fear. You see all these uh, videos on, online and uh, different places, and people panic. They, they don't know what to do when something like this happens, and there's a lot of fear. And today I actually want to talk about faith. Now, faith and fear don't get along really well. Um, faith is probably fear's greatest enemy. Um, so we see a lot of fear going on, and when you see fear, that means there's not very much faith there. And where you see a lot of faith, you won't see very much fear. And if anything, all of this should really encourage us uh, to go out and share the love of God. We see the mission out there. We see how much fear is in, in a lot of people and how much work we still have to do um, to share the gospel. So just be encouraged. Make the best of everything. I hope that all of you guys get to uh, uh, praise and worship uh, as a family at home, uh, sing together, um, pray together, do these things with your family, or if you're gathered with more people, do it with them. Um, be encouraged and just, just make it better than before if we can. So, um, so yeah, it's good. Um, Y'all are pretty comfortable. The same rules apply. No eating, no napping, no talking. Better be dressed your best. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. If you're in your pajamas, that's good. Let's just worship the Lord and let's just see what His Word says. So today I want to talk about faith. Um, now that's probably one of those sermons where you're about ready to take a nap, but hopefully you can bear with me and we can get uh, through this and learn something about how we can grow. A lot of times when we talk about faith, it's something that you don't really want to hear about sometimes. Like, say you're struggling with something, and you talk to somebody, and they just tell you, well, you just need to have a little more faith. Uh, you're kind of like, yeah, sure, why don't you bring some this way? Um, it's not like you aren't trying, right? Uh, but faith is something that God gives us when we become Christians. Um, but see how big that faith will grow. That will depend on the choices that you make. That's up to you how big you want that to, to grow. And truth be told, most people who have walked um, a life that has brought them to a place where they have a strong faith normally won't say that to somebody because they understand that it is more than just saying something. It's actually living a life. Uh, faith is where what you read in your Bible turns into a life lived. It's where you totally commit your life to Christ. It's when you look, or I look, at perhaps young people today, and not, not in our, just in our church, but throughout the whole Christian community. I look at a lot of the young people. Um, there are a lot of good kids, a lot of smart young people, but a lot of them do not have a drive in them. And they have no desire to want to work for the kingdom. They don't want to love people. Uh, they don't want to sacrifice and suffer uh, for Christ. See, young people today, a lot of them, they don't want to pay the price. But you see, the problem is that God's not willing to compromise. God is not willing to compromise. You either come by repentance and, and faith, or you don't come at all. So today, I want to hope, I hope we can learn to understand how we can not just receive faith, but how we can make this grow into something that's useful, that's productive, some, somehow that we can, we can do something with it. Um... So first, I want us to understand what it is. You probably hear the word faith all the time. Um, it's a big part of our Christian life. Um, but I want to first understand. So I want to look at Hebrews chapter 11 and then James chapter 2 um, right quick. Um, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says that it is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of, of things not seen. So faith in God is to trust and to believe in Him um, even when you can't see him or feel him or touch him. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to trust him anyways. And then James chapter 2, verse 14 says that faith without works is dead. So it says that it's an action word. It's more than just saying, right? It's um, that you actually show that you trust and you believe, and believe. Your life is actually doing that, right? And then if you look further on there, it actually says... Um, uh, can that kind of faith really save someone? If you read Hebrews chapter 11 and James chapter 2, the whole, uh, the whole uh, 
chapter there, you can learn a lot about faith. And if, if you read it carefully, it, it says that that kind of faith doesn't save a person. It needs to have action. It needs to be doing something. So if you guys want to learn more about what faith is, those two chapters, Hebrews 11 and James 2, are two really good ones to study. So for example, if we were to say uh, a person says that they have complete faith in God, that he's going to take care of them, he's going to do everything for them, they're not, you know, they have faith, but yet you look at their life and they're filled with fear, they worry about stuff all the time, they're always concerned, that person really doesn't have very much faith. Okay, they're really good at running their mouth, but their life does not show that. So, uh, why is this important? Why do we always keep going back to this word faith? It's because everything in the entire Bible is done by faith. From the very beginning to the very end, everything in God's word is done by faith. Um, you cannot do anything without faith. The Bible, um, it, if we were to say, for instance, prove that there's a God. If someone says, do you prove that there's a God, how are you going to do it? You know, you could say, well, look at creation. But yet, can you really prove to them that God was the one who physically created it? Um, if you say to them, well, God changed my life. Well, can you really physically prove to somebody that it wasn't just you deciding to suddenly make better choices? You tell someone that you're saved. But yet, they can come up with uh, reasons and explanations as to why you wouldn't be. And often you can even begin to doubt the very thing that you believe in when other people say it. So you see, when you look at Scripture, you have to accept it by faith. And once you accept it by faith, it's through that that God reveals it to you. And then you can really believe it because you've experienced it. You have to accept it by faith, faith, trust it, believe it, and then live it out. Faith is something that God gives us through His grace. When we choose to follow him, he gives us faith when we believe. Romans 10, 18 says faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. So it comes from his word. So you open the Bible, you read it, you accept Christ through faith, and then you live it out. Right? That's, that's how where, where faith comes from. So what is one to do? Does any of us not want to grow in faith? I'd ask you to raise your hands, but I wouldn't be able to see you. But... Uh, I trust and believe that every one of us wants to grow. No matter where we're at, no matter um, how young or how, how far you are along in your Christian walk, I think we all want to grow in our faith. So today I want to look at 2 Peter. Um, if you all got Bibles, I'm sure you all got a Bible in your home. I want you to grab it. Um, sometimes to me, I, I find this to be more effective when I get to see it in my own Bible. It's really in there. It's not just something I'm saying, and it may, may be a little hard, I don't know if you guys can see it on your screens or not, but if you have a Bible, I want you guys to open it to Second Peter, we're going to pretty much stay there uh, most of the time from here, but we're going to look at Second Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 15, now I kind of like hearing this from Peter, um, Peter was a guy who learned a lot about faith in his past, um, he was the one who walked on water, um, and Jesus told him, yet he had little faith. Um, he was the one that denied Jesus three times, um, so he didn't really trust him very much at that point. So he was a man who had to grow, right? He really experienced some challenges, and he had to grow in his faith. And, and here in Second Peter, he's actually close to the end of his life. So he's sharing a lot of things that he learned um, in his life. Now he starts off here talking about faith, but the whole book of Second Peter is actually, all there, most of it is basically directed towards false teaching. The church that he's writing to is going through tough persecution at this time. Um, they are being persecuted for their faith. Many of them are leaving their faith, and they're following other false teachings to try to escape it. Um, now, if the, a whole book of the Bible is written towards false teaching, then we must believe it's a big deal, and it's also a big deal to us today. I'm not going to talk very much about that, but just a few things here and there. So he first teaches us to grow in our faith. That's the first thing he, he talks about when he's trying to, to keep people from being deceived. Now, a lack of faith is often the reason why many people are misled. Um, any other religion is generally easier because any false teaching gives you something you can see. When you look at the Bible, they built calves, they built things out of wood, 
they did all kinds of things because they could see it, they could feel it, and they like that. Um, but that requires less faith than to trust a God that you can't see. So a lot of times that's where a lot of false teaching comes from. So even though this is directed towards that, this part of faith applies the same in every area of our life. We can grow in every area in here. So let's start. Verse 3. By His divine power, He has given us everything we need to live a godly life. So He hits us with this right off the bat. There is nothing that God has withheld from you that would keep you from being able to live this life. Now, I like that he starts off with that because it puts us all on level playing ground. It does not matter where you are, who you are, where you've been, what you've experienced, or where you are right now. God has given you what you need to be able to live a life of faith. So we need to get that out of the way right off the bat. We received all of this by coming to know him, the one who has called him to himself by means of marvelous glory and excellence. So how can we come to know him? It is through his word, and we accept him by faith through his word. Uh, verse 4, And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Do you guys really understand what this verse means? Do you understand it? You are promised to be able to share in His divine nature, to become like Him, to live freely, to live without sin, to be able to resist temptations of the world, to be saved. That is a promise that is given to you by God. But now watch verse 5. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Now listen carefully. Just because... There are promises in the Bible for you does not mean that they're going to play out in your life. In order for you to receive a promise, you must respond to it. For instance, Pastor Gearhart talked about this uh, just was it last Sunday or the Sunday before. Jesus died for all people's sins. For the entire world, from the beginning of creation to the end, He died for everyone's sin. All right. So we have the ability to be forgiven for our sins, but you have to respond to it. If people do not choose to respond to that, they will not be saved. It is written that way in Scripture. So, he says, make every effort to respond to these promises. So make every effort to respond to these promises. Supplement your faith with generous provision of uh, moral excellence. So, he says, supplement your faith. I like, my translation uses, the, this is NIV, uh, NLT, I believe, um, I always use that, I talk that, I read that, I understand that, so that's why I use it. But it says supplement your faith. So what does supplement mean? It's, it's for instance, if you go to the gym and you work out and you're pumping iron and uh, you want your muscles to grow faster, what do you do? You can use supplements, right? You can, uh, I don't know what y'all use, uh, protein supplements maybe? I don't know, I've, I've been to the gym once now and I think I'm done for the year. But... Uh, we supplement something when we want it to grow faster. We want it to, to, be, to become bigger. Um, so it says supplement this. So what we're going to go through here are things that you can use to help you grow. All right? So supplement your faith with moral excellence. This means create a godly moral standard. Every person, believer or unbeliever, has a moral standard. Most people make their own. They base them off of how they feel about things. Um, uh, they have things they believe are right and things that they believe are wrong, things they will do and things that they won't do. If you listen to the world, they will give you a very corrupt um, moral standard that will change and usually for the worse instead of better. But I want to challenge you to make a godly one where there's no room for sin and stand firm in it. For instance, when the Bible tells you not to get drunk, um, why not set a moral standard that says, I'm just never going to touch it at all. It's not going to be part of my life. When the Bible says tithe your money, give your 10% and round it up if you have to and be willing to give more if you, need, if, if you feel that there's a good place to do that too and stand by it. When the Bible says do not murder, make a moral standard that says I'm not even going to show hatred towards people because of it. Things you watch, things you see, things you listen to, choices you make, make a godly moral standard. 
This is how you create excellence. If you want to be excellent at something, you work hard for it and you aim high. You don't say this is good enough. You aim high. Moral excellence. Um, And as you grow as a believer, there's going to be more things that convict you. And as they convict you, add it to it. That you create a more godly moral standard um, all the time. Moral excellence with knowledge. This is talking about the knowledge of God's Word. What it says, what it means, and who God is. So let us, let's say, for instance, you want to become a doctor. If you want to become a doctor, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, here in America, you have to get an education, right? We have to um, go through schooling, through college. So when you go to school, uh, what do you do there? You've got to study books, right? You've got to listen to your teachers and professors, Um, you got to ask questions if you don't know. So, study the Bible, listen to teachers and preachers, and ask if you you have questions if you don't know. And what would happen if you were in school, if you were going to school and you're always late, you missed half of your classes and you really never paid attention? What would happen if they put a test before you? Well, you'd fail it, wouldn't you? Yet we do this with our spiritual life all the time. And yet, when we are tested in our life, we cannot understand why we fail. Knowledge with self-control. 1 Peter 1.13 also says, so think clearly and exercise self-control. The Bible teaches us that we can learn to control our own bodies, our lusts, our desires, our temptations, our habits, our hobbies. We are to learn to control them. Okay, Disciplining yourself is a very great way to do this fast from things. Perhaps it's uh, watching TV or electronics. Go a month without it. Maybe not right now if you guys are watching. But um, you discipline yourself. You have the ability to control yourself. You do. And it's part of the Holy Spirit is also part of that. Um, it's a, we, we're not given a spirit of fear, right? One of, of a sound mind or self-discipline. So the Holy Spirit can help us to control our bodies. Um, all the things that we struggle with. Self-control with patient endurance. We live in a world that when something hurts us, we want instant relief and medicate everything. We need to learn to be patient. right? To be patient, to walk through things that are faced before us. The suffering will often feel long and intense at times, but we need to keep going. Hebrews 10.36 says you need to persevere So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised us. So we need to learn to be patient. We need to be willing to endure the things that are faced before us. Patient endurance with godliness. Godliness means that we are conforming to the laws and the wishes of God. Yes, we are free in Christ when we accept him by faith, but we should never use our freedom for sin. We are, um, the new covenant teaches us with the Holy Spirit, um, with, with Christ inside of us, that we have an even greater ability to live um, a life without sin, a, a good life, uh, according to His Word. And now that law has become something that just shows us when we sin and when we do wrong. Um, so we need to grow to be somebody more like God. You see His character in Scripture. When you see Jesus' life, you see the character of God. Become like Him. That's godliness. So godliness with brotherly affection. Affection means that you like or you care for someone. You know, I've said it before that we need to love everybody, but you might not always like them. (laughs) And that may be the case sometimes. But when I read this, I really understand that God has a desire for us to learn to like people too. To not just have to love them, but to like them as well a brotherly affection, to care for them um, when they are in times of need, that we would be willing to help them, um, to cry with them when they're sad. Whatever they're going through, that we will be affectionate, that we will care for them and then actually like them and do things for them. Um, It also implies the word gentleness. Um, So we be gentle with people and try to feel with them. Try Try to get on their level they're going through something difficult try to relate brotherly affection so with brotherly affection 
uh, with, uh, with love for everyone. To love people is the greatest command in the Bible. You can't say that you love God if you don't love His people. Because loving people is simply who God is. In this world, we often confuse love with lust. We believe that love should feel good and benefit us in some way all the time. But that's not love at all. Love is always giving. And if it's giving, it's going to cost you something. If loving God is going to cost you something, loving people will also cost you something. There's a saying out there that says, no good deed goes unpunished, and that's exactly right. But we need to become people that are willing to pay the price. We need to be willing to pay the price to do good and to love the people around us, even if it's going to cost us something. You know, when I was thinking about this, the question came to my mind, do I really love God or do I like Him? Uh, many times uh, we just like the benefits of God. We like what He has to offer, the salvation, the good things, um, but I think it needs to be more than that. We need to learn to love God. And when we love God, we're going to love people. It starts there. So the more we, uh, continuing on there, the more we grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ because those who fail to ve develop in this way are short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed of their old sins. So there's seven different things here that he kind of went through. These are the things that we need to do if we want to grow in our faith. This is what Peter teaches us. It says here we want to become productive and useful. Okay, You want to be productive. You want to produce more. There needs to be growth. You want to be useful. It needs to do something. Your faith needs to do something. And then it also says knowledge. This is the second time it's mentioned knowledge, so I felt like I needed to say just a little bit more on this. Um, there in verse 8, uh, the Bible also says in, in a different part of Scripture that people will perish for lack of knowledge. This is talking about people who never knew the truth or they failed to seek out the truth. And they perished for that. But sometimes it could be the other way too. Uh, correct knowledge is the key here. Um, Knowledge without action, with no action, can sometimes be more harmful than good to you. So many people in today's culture, they want to grow in knowledge. They want to grow and they want to learn more, and that's a good thing they, in some aspects, but sometimes that's all they want. They want to go deeper. They want to know more. Yet when you look at their life, they haven't even come close to living out what they already know. Not even close. In fact, I believe many false teachings come from this. They come from the part of Scripture. Uh, they come, they know parts of Scripture, but they don't understand all of it because they've never experienced it. You know, the religious leaders in, the, in, in Corinthians and other places of Scripture were extremely well educated, but they were far from God. They never understood the simple command to love people. They didn't understand it. If you... Uh, look today um, some people fail to understand the easiest scripture in, in all of the Bible John 3.16 it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life what does that verse mean it means that God loves everybody no matter who you are where you're from or what you do he loves everybody it means that he sent his son for everybody Okay, he, the sins are for everybody, and anybody who chooses him can have eternal life. But how many, how many false teachers out there completely contradict that? They say you first have to do this, you first have to know this, you first have to do something different. And it completely contradicts the most simple scripture. Now don't misunderstand me, knowledge is good. He told us that we need to learn God's Word. We need to grow in knowledge. But what I'm trying to get to here, here to say is that we need to grow in all of these things at the same time. If you thought to yourself, well, I'm doing good in most of these areas, but maybe I could grow a little bit in self-control. Um, if that's what you thought, you kind of missed it. 
you need to grow in all of these areas at the same time. If you grow just in knowledge, but you don't apply any of these other things, you can easily be deceived. God has called us to grow in every one of these areas at the same time. Even if you've been doing well, apply them all. Uh, when you put all of them together with knowledge, you protect yourself from false teaching. So do all of these things, but doing these things is going to take a little bit of a change of lifestyle. It's going to take a change of direction. I heard it say, I heard this analogy put one time, and, and I like it. You may have heard it before, but there was a sea captain. He was driving a big uh, ship, and he was getting close to the port. And as he's getting closer, it, it gets really foggy, and he can't see very well. Um, so he's looking really close. He's already slowed down a little bit. And so he's got his binoculars, and he's looking. He doesn't want to hit anybody. And he looks over, and, he, and, and in the distance, he sees a beacon going, and it's headed right for him. So he immediately gets on the radio, and he says uh, to, the, to the other person, he gets on the radio, and he says, Sir, we are headed right for each other. I need you to change your course 30 degrees to the north. And this, uh, he gets a response back on the radio right away, and the guy says, No, you need to change your direction 30 degrees to the south. And he thinks to himself, he'd, I think the other guy needs to move. So he gets back on the radio and he says, No, sir, I need you to change your direction 30 degrees to the north immediately. And he gets a reply instantly again that says, No, sir, you need to change your direction 30 degrees to the south. At this point, he was getting a little bit frustrated. He was a, very good at this. He had been a sea captain for many years. So he gets back on the radio and he tells this guy, he says, I've been a sea captain for 30 years. I'm driving a 50,000 ton container ship and it's a quarter mile long and you need to change your direction 30 degrees to the north now. And he gets a reply back on the radio and he says, well, I'm a lighthouse. So change your direction 30 degrees to the south. You see, no matter how long we've lived a life for Christ, or how wise we think we are, or how well we've lived. If we want to become better, we're going to have to change our direction. We're going to have to change something that we're doing if we want to become better. Verses 10 and 11, So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you are really among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will, go will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us work hard, all right? Let's, let's work hard. And let our life show that we are truly God's children. This may be something new to some of you and maybe something that you've heard a thousand times for others. But look at what 12 and 15 says. Therefore, I will always remind you of these things, even though you have already known them and you are standing firm in the faith that you've been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon live this earthly life, so I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I'm gone. So Peter knew that he was getting close to the end of his life. He was soon going to leave this world, and he found it extremely important to remind this church about this. And if it was important to them, it's important to us. So I was hoping to be able to remind you guys that we need to keep working hard in this area. Um, there's a saying out there that says, in our walk with the Lord, if you're not going forwards, you're going backwards. And this is exactly true. As soon as we get in a comfortable place and we stay there, we find ourselves going backwards. That's because there's an enemy in this world and he's working hard and he wants you to go backwards. If you're going to stop working, he's not. He's going to keep working and you'll find yourself going backwards. So life generally doesn't get easier when we get older. Uh, but if our faith grows faster than we age, then it will get easier. Um, so with that thought, I want to close you guys in a little story about uh, Dr. Tony Evans. Um, Dr. Tony Evans uh, is a pastor in a big church uh, close to Dallas, Texas. And um, I've listened to a lot of his teachings. We've done a lot of Sunday schools and Bible studies about Tony Evans. And... Um, about two years ago, 
Tony Evans' wife was diagnosed with a really deadly cancer. And uh, they said it would progress fast, most likely, but they sought out doctors, they did everything they could, and she really did pretty good for quite some time. However, uh, here just two months ago, at the end of January, uh, Dr. Tony Evans' wife, Lois, she passed away from, from cancer. She lost her life with a battle of cancer. But Tony Evans, um, he shared a little story here just not too long ago about his wife and how all of this played out. And I wanted to share a little bit with you today about that. Um, he said that when she, she uh, started to get more and more sick, she couldn't really walk around. She couldn't move around. Her, her body was getting weaker. So she had to sit most of the time or in a chair or in a wheelchair. But she loved to share the gospel with people. She loved to, to encourage people. So when people would come over, she would do that. And uh, she loved to read her Bible. Um, so she would ask them to put the Bible on her lap. And then she would flip the pages and she would read through her Bible. And she would just learn more and more about God. She loved to worship. Uh, through song so she would ask them to put the radio on so she could sing uh, with the songs that she loved and as she became more and more sick she got to the point where she couldn't even uh, move her arms enough to flip the pages but she would still read and she would ask somebody to flip the page for her and she'd keep reading God's word um, she she would kept um, listening to the worship music she liked. She couldn't sing very good anymore, but she would try her best, and she would sing the best that she could. And she became more and more sick, and she finally got to the point where her vision wasn't even good enough that she could read anymore, but then she would ask somebody to put God's Word on the radio so she could, she could still hear. So she would get to hear God's Word through, through the radio. It would talk God's Word. And as she loved to sing, she couldn't hardly speak at all anymore. And they would put her worship music on and she would sing her best, but it would barely come out as, as barely a mumble. And it went on like this and soon she passed away. Now when Tony Evans shared this about his wife, there was something he was extremely proud of. Very, very proud of. And he said it multiple times. But he said she kept the faith. She kept the faith. That's what she did. This is one of the greatest stories that I've ever heard of someone who keeps the faith. You keep going forward till your very last breath, till you've got nothing left. You keep seeking God. You keep doing these things. You never get to the point where you stop. We keep growing in our faith and we keep doing better. I was very inspired by that. So today I want to encourage you to look at these attributes and be willing to change your, your direction and be willing to grow in, in your faith. And I'm sure if you do, you will be greatly encouraged by that. So that's all I had for you today. And I just would like to close this up today with a word of prayer. So wherever you're at, would you just bow with me and I'll pray. Father in heaven, as we come before you today um, in a much different setting than what we're used to, but God, you're still God. You're still the same. You're still in control. Um, God, we thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. And we just pray now that you grow our faith. Teach us, show us things that we need to change. Show us a different direction if we need to change our di direction. Help us to be able to apply each one of these and to discipline ourselves, to, to, to do what we need to do that we can grow in our faith so that we can share this, we can become productive people, that we can always do more, that we can help those around us, God. And I know that's what your will is. So I thank you for all of that, and I pray a big blessing on everybody today. I pray that they can enjoy their families at home, um, friends if they're over. And may you bless all of it, and I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.